Hello guys, you are watching Code with Flash and in this video we are looking at virtual environments in Python. By the end of this tutorial, you will know what virtual environments are, why you should start using them, and you will learn how to create them on Windows, Linux, and on Mac OS. Before we go any further, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell button for more cool video content from this channel. Now let's get started. First of all, let's talk about how Python treats third-party packages. Whenever you install a package using pip, it gets downloaded and installed in a directory called sites packages. And let's see how you can find that folder on your computer. Let me pull up a command prompt window here. Now to find where Python is installed on your computer, if you're on Windows, you can type in where Python and that should bring it up. But if you're on Linux or Mac, then the command should be which Python and that should work out. So from here, we can see that Python 3.7 is installed in the app data directory. You go to local programs, Python and Python 3.7. So let me do that right here. So I'm in my main user folder and let me move on to the app data folder, then to local then to programs and now python python 37 and this is where python is installed to find where the sites packages directory is you move to the lib directory capital l i b and we can find sites packages right here so this is where all third party packages you install through pip are installed so why am i showing you this that's because all projects you create using python will have its dependencies residing in this folder and that can be a problem sometimes and that is because of versions so what do i mean by this let's consider this scenario you are a web developer using django and you started using django when it was in version 2.1.2 and you have both some major programs with it. Let's install that Django 2.1.2 using pip install Django 2.1.2. Okay, so Django 2.1.2 .2 has been installed. Let's verify it in our site packages directory. And it is right over there. So as back to the example, you uh you have been using Django 2.1 for some time. Then fast forward a year later, Django 3 has been released. So you decide to start using it. Let's install that also and see what happens. And that should be Django 3 0.0.0. All right, so the installation is now complete. And let's notice something here. It says that successfully uninstalled Django 2.1.2. So whenever you install this and a different version of the same package, it uninstalls the older one or the previous one. So you do one or two projects with Django 3.0, then you decide to go back to your previous project in which you built with Django 2.1.2, .2, only to realize a bunch of errors because Django 3 is a major version of Django and therefore it's not compatible with the previous version of Django, this one being Django 2. And now you realize that and your life is messed up and this whole mess you realize could have been avoided if only you had used virtual environments. So at this point, 
what is a virtual environment? Well, a virtual environment basically is an isolated environment for Python projects with its own dependencies. It is recommended that each project you undertake gets its own virtual environment. That way you could have different versions of the same package for each project and you can avoid the whole mess described before. So in one virtual environment, you could have Django 3 installed and in another Django 2 installed. And you can use them for different projects and your life will be much more easy and you have a better Python experience. Enough with the talking now. Let's see how you can create virtual environments first on Windows. Now back to my command prompt window. To create a virtual environment in Python on Windows, it's quite simple. Python provides the venv or vmv library to help you do that. To use it, all you have to do is type in Python then with a command line argument dash m then venv and that's the library that you'll be using then the name of your virtual environment it could be anything let's type in m then you press enter let's wait a while for it to create now it's done let's see what has been created let's open an explorer window and see what has been done. Okay. Let me pull it up here. So the env folder has been created and let's look at what the content in it is. You can see that the lib folder is also here. And when you open it, we see the size packages also has been created. So that means Whatever we create in this virtual environment, any third-party library we install or download will be installed inside the site packages directory in this virtual environment. But it doesn't work just that way. We first have to activate this virtual environment and doing so is very simple. We first navigate to the script directory inside the virtual environments we've created. Let's navigate into the directory then move on to the scripts directory and when we look into the inside the scripts directory we find out that a bunch of python files are available here what we are interested in is in the activate script that is a batch file the activate scripts here that's what you need to activate the virtual environment and to do that, you just type in activate and this should run the batch script. And to know that the uh, virtual environment has been activated, you can see that the command prompt window has been or the, the prompt has been preceded with the name of the virtual environment inside brackets. And now whatever we install will be downloaded and installed inside the size packages directory of our virtual environment. Now let's install Django to verify and see where it gets installed into. Pip install Django. Let's verify the installation. So we move on to the lib directory again inside the size packages. Then there you go. Django has been installed in all its companion packages installed in the size packages directory. So that's the point of virtual environment, an isolated Python environment where all the dependencies of your project are installed into. So now whenever you import Django in your project and you have the virtual environment enabled, then it will be imported from this directory instead of the main installation of Python you have on your system. And that is how you activate and create a virtual environment on Windows. To deactivate it and return to your normal Python environment or your normal command prompt, prompt you just type in deactivate. And now you see that the env um, 
preceding the prompt is no longer run, that means the virtual environment has been deactivated. Now let's move on to Linux or Mac. And it's actually a little bit, it's mostly the same, but there are a few differences you must note. So let's look at that next up. Now let's create a virtual environment on Linux. I'm using a remote virtual private server on DigitalOcean. And for less than an hour, it should cost only a few cents. You can sign up with a link in the description. For new users, you'll get a 60-day $100 credit. So feel free to check it out and follow along. To create a virtual environment on Linux, you first need to install a Linux package using apt-get. Type in the following command to do so. The name of the package is python 3 vem. Let's run that. And that should have the package installed. Once that is done, let's create a virtual environment as we did on Windows. And the command is pretty much the same. And now the virtual environment has been created. To activate this virtual environment is a bit different as compared to Windows. Why? This time, the activate script is found in the bin folder, not the script. Let's verify that also. Let's see the into the virtual environment folder. And we are now in the bin folder of the virtual environment directory. And let's verify the activate script. And the activate script is right over here. To activate it also, we need to use the source command instead. You can't just type in activate and expect it to run. This, this is Linux, not Windows. So source activate. And now that should be all you need to do to activate the virtual environment. Do not forget the dots and the slash. And now the virtual environment is now, the name is right here and the prompt has changed, meaning it has successfully been activated. To deactivate this virtual environment, all you need to do is type in deactivate as we did on Windows and that should have it deactivated. And the concept remains the same, both on Windows, Linux, and on Mac. So there you have it, it's as simple as that. And I hope you've learned something from this video and please subscribe and leave a comment below. And stay tuned for more content from this channel. See you later.